Lord, we just worship you, we give you glory, we give you praise because you are worthy. Yes. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. You are worthy. Lord, we just worship you this morning. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. Because we worship you, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are, we worship you, hallelujah, we worship you. together. Let's praise the name of Jesus. Amen.
were closed in my face. Yeah, Lord, I'm grateful, so grateful to you. Brought me through this. You brought me through this. you are grateful out here today. God didn't have to wake us up, but he did. How many of you are truly grateful for all that Jesus has done today? Can you say it with me? I'm so grateful. grateful. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know Jesus paid the price for our sins? This is a Palm Sunday, so we lead up to Holy Week. I'm just mighty grateful that he died on the cross for us. Oh! 
minute. We came through that storm last night. Somebody's house got tore up down there in Bridgeville. But we're here standing and we're praising God this day for a new day. Yes, yes. If there's a word that, that we should remember is think about it. Think about what God has done for us. There's another word, grateful. I heard grateful this morning. Just be grateful for what God has given us. What given us, not looking at what someone else has, but what has given us this day. Amen. Amen. Let us do our statements of faith together today. God gives us hearts and minds to serve thee worthily and gives us a life to shine with holy ambition and pure motives. Save, Save us from serving thee to be seen of men. Cleanse our thoughts, sanctify our hearts, and aid us in our worship that you may get the glory. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray to the supreme ruler of heaven and earth. Let us pray to the father of the beginning and the end. Let us pray to our Jesus Christ, who was our everlasting Lord, well. our King of Kings, our Prince of Peace. Father God, we, we come to you with all our hearts, with all of our minds, and with all of our souls coming to you to say thank you Lord for another morning thank you Lord that this morning wasn't our cooling board this morning was a morning that we woke up with our minds and our legs and our arms still moving and our eyes to see and our ears to hear. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you gave us all traveling mercy here on the dangerous highways and byways. As we were sitting in our cars and some riding and some driving, and we thank you for just covering us with our steering wheels, Father God. Lord, we thank you that you guided us here safe and sound. And Father God, not only us, the ones that are on their way. Father God, we even thank you for the ones that are watching this morning that wasn't able to come out, but they're able to be still in the service of the Lord. So right now, we thank you for the ones that are watching on YouTube. We thank you for the ones that are in the nursing homes that, that may be watching. We thank you for the ones that are prison bound. We thank you for the ones that are sick. We thank you for the caregivers that are by the sick one's sides this morning. So Lord, we just thank you because you are the father of all. We thank you for allowing us to be here on earth to live in brotherly love with one another. So we love you, Lord. We thank you for uniting us and giving us liberty today. And on this day, Palm Sunday, we thank you for coming in on the triumph junkie this morning, many, many years ago. Five more days that you will be stretched wide on the cross, taking up our sins. So what can we say? We all can say, thank you, Lord, thank in this Lord. Prayer. Thank prayer. Thank you for dying of all our sins and our griefs to bear. 
So we thank you, Lord, for that great, great, great coming Friday where we will not have sin no more, that we will have the tree of life. And Father God, we thank you right now to ask you to bring and cover our pastor with the word today. For we need a word. We need to hear a word. So Lord, we ask you to let him come in and touch his soul from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Touch his heart that he may do your will and be your vessel. In your great name, we pray. Amen. You know we reach to the And it goes to the lowest valleys. Oh, that blood. Oh, that blood. Nothing but the blood. <laughs> I know it was 
the blood. Y'all don't hear me in here. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, yes, he died on the cross. Oh, I know it was the blood for me. Well, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, yes, he died on the cross. Oh, I know it was the blood for me. Well, they hung him on the cross. They hung him on the cross. They hung him on the cross for me. Oh, one day when I was don't you know he died on that cross? Oh, I know it was the blood for me. Well, they nailed him to the tree. They nailed him to the tree. They nailed him to the tree for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, don't you know he died on that cross? Oh, I know it was the blood for me. I like this. He never said a murmuring word. He never said a murmuring word. He never said a murmuring word. For me, yes, one day when I was gone, don't you know he died on the cross? Oh, I know it was the blood for me. Well, they pissed him in his side. They pissed him in his side. They pissed him in his side for me. Well, one day when I was lost, oh, he died on the cross. Oh, I know it was the blood for me. Well, the blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. Oh, I know it was the blood for me. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died. Hung his head and died for me. Well, one day when I was lost, he died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Well, they laid him in a borrowed grave. They laid him in a borrowed grave. They laid him in a borrowed grave for me. Well, one day when I was lost, well, he died on the cross. Church, I know it was the blood for me. I like this. The grave couldn't hold him down. The grave couldn't hold him down. The grave couldn't hold him down for me. Well, one day when I was lost, well, he died on the cross. Yes, I know it was the blood for me. Well, I know it was the blood. No, it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. How many know it was the blood? It wasn't your goodness. 
It wasn't how good you look. It wasn't how well you dressed. It was nothing but the blood of Jesus that washed our sins away. Can I get a witness in here this morning? Mm -hmm. You can't say nothing sometimes. You just got to... Just moan sometimes. Lord, I thank you. We thank you this morning. We want to thank our praise team and musicians for opening us up this morning. Amen. <laughs> we truly ask that you will inform those who are not here uh, about next Sunday. Uh, what time next Sunday? Oh, everybody didn't say nothing. I didn't see no mass move. Uh, what time next Sunday? Amen. Uh, our youth, amen, will be on point. Amen. They will be singing. We will have a skit. Uh, we will present to you the seven last words summarized. And we will preach and go home. Amen. Amen. Early day, but it's going to be a good day. If the Lord let us see us, it's going to be a glorious day. Remember to pray for all of our sick and our shut-in. Uh, Brother Lawrence Lewis is doing well. He's had his knee surgery. He's back home. And little Miss Janae Harrison. Uh, is out of ICU. She's in a room now. Come on, give God some praise. But we know not what they are intending to do. We think that they are uh, building her body up so that she could have the surgery that she needs to correct a twisted valve uh, in her heart. So uh, that's nothing to play with. And those of you who gone beyond 14 years old ought to shout on that moment because she's only 14 years old. And if God has given you health and strength, amen, uh, you ought to be thankful. Amen. And I am proud to say that our own uh, Kyrie Griffin has earned his Jewish doctorate. Amen. And he... He graduated. Amen. Praise him. What was that? May 6th is graduation? Well, he already graduated in my book. He done passed that test. He done graduated. Amen. Praise his name. All he's doing is the formality. Here, give me my paper. I don't know. Amen. So I thank God for the achievements of all of our young people. We pray that God will lift them to higher heights and that they will be a man more a man than we are. That's one thing about us. I, I want to see the next generation do more uh, than we have done. If they can stand on their parents' shoulders and see 10 miles, they ought to be able to stand on the shoulders of the church and see 30 miles. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. So let us continue to lift up Deacon Hinman, Wayne Hinman, who is mending at home. We ask that you would uh, lift him up in prayer. We're thankful for those of you who may be visiting we thank for those of you who thought it not robbery to come. We thank for, for, to God for all of the pilgrimage, amen, who are here, amen. And there is a word from the Lord. Coming out of James chapter 2, we're making a visit. And I just want to lift up this thought, the power of faith. I want to talk about the power of faith this morning. What does it mean when someone says they have faith? 
James chapter 2, beginning at verse 14. These words are penned for our understanding this morning. Coming out of the New King James translation, James chapter 2, verse 14 says, What doeth it profit? What doeth it profit? My Christian brothers and sisters, Though a man say he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, hmm, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, Ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What do with their profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yes, many will say, it says a man here, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. I, I want to stop there, and I want to talk about the power of faith this morning. Because many folks say they have faith, and their words don't match their walk. Many people say, I believe and I have faith in God, but you won't let God work in your situation. You won't stop worrying about the situation that you have already delivered to God in your prayer. So James here brings us to a point where he tries to get our minds off of worldly things. Bring us into line with spiritual things. A lot of people today will look carnally or worldly at situations not realizing that God is still in control. Many will say, I go to church, I, I, I tithe, I, I praise God, and all of these things keep happening to me. Is there any use for me to go and do that and trouble comes? Yes, it is. Because there's something that God wants you to learn concerning your faith. Your faith is not Praising him when things are going well. Faith kicks in when gas done ran out. You run on fumes sometimes when you're dealing with faith. And you say, Lord, if you just get me to the next gas station. I know I'm running on empty. I know the light is red. I know I'm chucking sometimes. But just get me to the next station. You roll up in there and say, thank you, Lord. Faith is knowing that when we call on him, he's going to move in our situation. There are times when we as a people, and, and here's what James is saying. You put your hope on material things. You put your hope on money. You put your hope in man rather than putting your faith in God. Brothers and sisters, we're living in a time when we need faith. Listening uh, to my own doctors, he talks about those who had gone through certain situations and, and because they prayed, because they had their faith in God, they fared out greater than those who did not know God. 
Miracles happen that they can't explain. Why? Because you deal with a person of faith. Now, brothers and sisters, faith is not seeing something, but yet stepping in it. Not knowing what is going to happen, but know that God has you in his hand. That's what Hebrews 11 teaches us. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Turns around is the evidence of things. Oh, Y'all don't hit me in here. I got some students. It, it, it's the evidence of things not seen. Uh, how can you have hope? And hope back in the day, brothers and sisters, if you talk to someone down the road, and, and if you spoke with someone who has lived in New York but grew up in the South, they would say, uh, they hope me. They ain't going too far back. I got them in here. They ain't saying nothing, but I got them in here. <laughs> My wife said going too far back. I ain't, I'm, on, I'm on point this morning. Amen. <laughs> We got relatives that didn't say uh, my hope, but they use hope as help. When I hope in God, I'm looking for his. When my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and his righteousness, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean, y'all. Uh, on Jesus name on Christ come on him writer the solid rock I stand all of the ground is but faith will take you where your knowledge don't understand faith will move and baffle those who don't believe in the power of God. That's why you got people who are jealous of one another. Yeah, they think they know you, but they don't know you. I know where they work. They don't pay that much money. How they get that there? I'm glad you asked. God is a rewarder of faith. God will bring favor upon those who believe. Y'all don't hear me in here. You working your fingers to the bone, never will praise, never will come to church and wonder why your money is running funny. Come on, Habakkuk. Becca writes, and he says, they, 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 they were prospering, and yet they ran to the mountains trying to hide. They went in trying to escape the enemy, and everything they got ran straight through their pockets, all because they were not praising God. You can work all your life, but you won't see a Wells Fargo truck following you to the cemetery. I come to bear record when you praise God. He gives gives you time to enjoy his blessing. When you praise God, he gives you an opportunity to do things that you never thought you would do. What, what do it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he has faith and no works. Come on now. He's talking to the church. He's talking to the body of Christ. He's not really just talking to those who have gathered here today, but he's talking to all of us who are believers in his name. And what he is saying to us is, if you say you got faith in me, I ought to see some signs. I ought to see somebody doing something in my name. Not just showing up, but walking in it. James trying to let them know that this is not a compartmentalized type of lifestyle. You don't praise him today and cuss tomorrow. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I know I didn't get a lot of amens on that one. Uh, but, but, but he says, and have not works, can faith save him? So in other words, can your faith save you without works? You see, I, I, I can't get it. I can't get it. I, 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 I grew up believing in what mom and daddy told me. I grew up believing in what they were instilling in me. I, I grew up trusting the words that they said to me. Therefore, when I heard the directions, I started moving. When I learned what they wanted me to do, I started making my beds in the morning. I started fluffing my own pillow. I made sure my clothes were hung up. I made sure I ironed and pressed them before going to school the next day. Because when I left out of my room, that exemplified the cleanliness of God. When I pressed and prepared myself for school to leave the house, I was representing not only the house, but I was representing God in my walk. I didn't walk around with my butt showing. I wasn't privileged to wear holy jeans. They pay more for wrapped up, scrapped up jeans than I pay for good jeans. You wasn't careful, they called us patches. Mama had them iron-on patches that when you wore a hole in them, she didn't throw them away. She patched them up, and then you had to go walking. But even with the patch, you had to iron and starch them. Oh, can I get a witness? Why? Because I was representing the family. Oh, when I say I'm representing the family of God, I can't dress any kind of way. I can't talk, Jones, any kind of way. I can't treat people any kind of way. I have to do it the way God told me to do it. Love your enemy. Oh, my goodness. I was about like Paul on that one. Peter and me were brothers on that one. It, it took the Holy Ghost. To get me to love my enemies. But when I started trying, Brother Terry, when I started putting love to action, I found out that the more I treated them with respect, down the road, respect came back to me. When they didn't like, I kept on loving. When they tried to hinder my way, God was covering me. And when it was all said and done, the ones who didn't like me started to respect me. I, you don't have to like me, but you got to respect me. Uh, but I come to battle record, I don't have to treat you the way you treat me. Because my joy did not come from this world. My joy did not come from the good that I've done. My joy has come from the Lord who gave me peace. You see, I don't have to stay mad at some of y'all. People will make you mad, even good Christian folk. But when we run into situations, and this is where the power of faith comes in, when we run into situations, we have to understand what God is doing is teaching us. Without conflict, how would you know he delivers? Without enemies, how do you know he's not covering? 
without those who want to scandalize your name. How do you know God is not a preserver? writer says, what, 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 what can man do unto me? The answer is nothing. When God is covering you in your foolishness, in your shortcomings, when you, your faith has started to dwindle, God is still covering you. But if there's just a little faith, come on and talk to me. Well, you don't need big faith. The faith of a grain of mustard seed will get you over when you're hurting. Oh, yeah, you're still in the flesh now. Come on. Everybody in here, that you're not the rock of Gibraltar. There are some things that bring you down. There are some things that will mess up your thought pattern. There are some things that sometimes want to make you turn and go back the other way. No, 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 no. I, I, I say that because I don't need no ASAPs in here. ASAP in the 73rd Psalm says, uh, uh, I was envious of the prosperity of the wicked. And my foot almost slipped. Come on, ASAP. ASAP said, I got tired of looking at the wealthy being blessed. I got tired of how they were treating God's people. I got tired that I almost went back to my hookup. Young, young folk used to say, I got the hookup. No, no, I ain't got the hookup. I'm hooked up. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't have to got the hookup. I, I'm hooked up. And, and when we are hooked up, there's nothing else for us to do but wait on who we hooked up with. So I just want somebody in here to know I don't care what you are going through. Faith alone won't save you because I, I can say I have faith and, 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 and in my faith I'm weak. In, in my faith I won't let go of some things out of fear. I feel like I got to handle it sometimes. But that's not the case with faith. Faith is a healer. Let me show you why faith is a healer. Because faith teaches us that when we take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there, we are at peace in ourselves. See, peace starts right here. And a lot of times, people want other folk to give them peace. You, you, you just came through a storm. The warning went out. The watch went out. And then they tell you the difference between the warning and the watch. When you're watching, they hadn't seen it, but they say it's approaching somewhere. But when it's a warning, they tell you to take cover. Oh, y'all don't hear me in here. Why? Because it is imminent that a storm of that magnitude is coming. Matter of fact, it's where you are. Ask them in Sussex County. But when trouble comes to us, there's a warning. Because the Bible teaches us the warning sign. When it says, watch and walk circumspectly, knowing your surroundings. And then the warning will come when someone is right in your midst. And the Spirit will say, step aside. The Spirit will say, don't mess with that one. The Spirit will say, sit down, shut up, and watch me work. Why? 
Because when the one that is spiritual is in the midst of those in darkness, it brings about a man a, a time when they are agitated. They don't want Christian folk because it messes up their groove. They can't drink like they want to. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't hear me in here. Mm-hmm. They can't gossip like they want to. When the Spirit of God is in the midst, there's an uneasiness. And don't get some of these bold soldiers that walk up in there. You, you start talking and start talking what they're not talking, but you start talking about God, they start tipping. Oh, Got to go. I, I, I'll see you later. And the only one left are those who can't go. God has set it up where they have to sit there and listen to what the word has to say. That's what I like about being over here right now. Sometimes when the word got tight, they took flight. And they back on the back wall start tipping. Hello, y'all don't think I see, do you? Uh huh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but God is a good God. And He teaches us here to help our brothers and sisters. If you say you have faith, then do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now, we, 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 are the, we are the promoters. We are the ones who would have to initiate kindness. You ever try to speak to somebody and they just rude speaking? Uh, y'all don't experience that, ain't you? Okay. All right. But, 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 but what is the test on that? All we can do is what the law say. Treat them with love and kindness. All right, so if I'm coming in and I speak to somebody and they're grumbling, uh, I'm going to speak to you next week too. (coughs) And I'm going to speak to you the week after that until you stop grumbling. Now, if you don't like me speaking, don't come. That's the way Christian folk ought to be. You ought to keep speaking. They're not accustomed to people being nice. Agitated lives. When the Christian way, good morning. Christian way is glad to see. And you ought to be thankful somebody is glad to see you. Because when some folks show up, they ain't glad to see them. They know they're going left. This is what he's saying here. Treat one another as you would like to be treated. So he says, if a brother or sister are destitute and need that of clothing, they're naked, they're hungry, then we ought to be able to supply some type of need. This is what he was telling the church here. And as he writes his letter, James goes on and says, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What do with their profit then? If you tell them to be warm, but yet send them back out with nothing. You tell them I'm going to feed you rather than giving them something to carry. This is what he's saying. Being helpful. But we are so tight right now. We are so caught up in individualism. We 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 don't understand the power of giving. Now, I'm going to say this. When you don't give to God, you ain't giving to nobody else. If you don't give your time, if you don't give your talent, if you don't give your substance, and I ain't even worrying about the substance, because God ain't worrying about the substance, he's worrying about you. If you 
are in his will, if you are in his hand, no one can pluck you out of it. Hallelujah. And so what, what, he, what he says, uh, he, he, even so, let me, let me go on because I don't want to put nobody to sleep. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Now, God is the Holy One. God is marked out as the one that gives us the things that we need. And the Holy One of God is in that of Mark chapter 1, verse 24. He said that he is the God of holy. He is the holy God. And being the holy God, faith without words is dead. So, so, so you can tell somebody. I've had this to happen. I've had people, well, not here. But I had people in my other pastorates uh, that would tell folk, you, 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 you need to come to the church. You need to come on back to the church. We're having a good time. And they end up coming to church. And the person that invited them ain't showed up. I've had them come back the next Sunday. And the person that invited still didn't show up. Faith is our works is dead. How you going to tell somebody to come to your house and you ain't home? Well, they in my chair. Well, if you wasn't here, you don't have a chair. They in my seat. Well, if you wasn't on time, you didn't get that seat. The Bible says, whosoever will, let them come. First come, first serve. Amen. Well, that's my seat. You're late. Pick another one. How you gonna have a seat and ain't no Holy Ghost in the seat you're sitting in? And sometimes we need to be separated. Sometimes we need to be diverse. You don't need to sit where you're always set because God can use you wherever you are in the congregation. I like for Holy Ghost folk to be in the back of the church. I like for them to be in the middle of the church. I don't need deacons always on the front. Get in the back sometime. Get up and praise God for those who don't want to praise God. Let something rub off on you. That's what it ought to be. David was upset when he was exiled because of his son Absalom. David was running all over the country, all, all, all over the place. And when he wanted to come to church, David found out that if he, if he, if he went to church, they, they would be sitting up waiting on him. So David says that if I can only get to the threshold of the door, I, I know I'm in the presence of the Lord. He wanted to come to church so bad, but he was a wanted man. It didn't stop him from worshiping and praising, but what he desired was to be in the presence of the Lord in the temple. Now, hear this. David went on to say, they got birds. The sparrow done made their nest in the corner, and I can't even get in the door, Deacon Sunday. But if I get to the threshold, I can feel the presence of the Lord. I know I'm on holy ground. I know God is in the midst. Oh, as we hasten on and get you out of here, he says, yea, man may say that thou hast faith and I have works. Show me then thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. I, I, I like this portion of scripture because there are those who say I'm a believer but they don't act like it. I am one who trusts in God but they won't study his word. I'm one 
who believes in the power of prayer. I'm one that believes that if I come and praise God, and when praises go up, my blessings will come down. But these are the same ones that are bragging about their relationship with God, trying to get others uh, to believe how good and holy they are. But brothers and sisters, what James was saying here in the text, I don't have to boast uh, about my faith. Let my works uh, speak for me. Uh, the writer says, may the works that I've done speak for me. Oh, I come to battle records uh, that when we walk uh, uh, humbly in this world, somebody uh, is going to recognize uh, something strange about you. Oh, someone said preaching, uh, and they didn't know I was the preacher. <laughs> oh, you uh, are so humble, uh, and you talk uh, a good word. <laughs> Uh, are you uh, a deacon uh, in your church? I say, yes, ma'am. I am a deacon uh, in my church. They said, wait a minute. I thought they said you uh, was the pastor. I said, yes, I am uh, the pastor in the church. But I'm ex officio uh, of everything in the church. Church. I'm a deacon, I'm a servant, I'm an ambassador, I'm a trustee, I'm an usher, I'm a choir member, I'm whatever you need me to be. I don't need a title to work for my God. If I have to be the janitor, I'll sweep the house of Almighty God. If I have to be the people in the yard. I go out and pick up trash around God's house. I don't need a title to serve my God. Well, I thought you had people to do that. Well, we do. But I grew up under a good mother. And mama said, if you see something needs to be done, go ahead and do it. Don't wait they don't nobody else because they may not do it. So I learned how to go ahead and do the work of Almighty God. Can I get a witness? By faith, Abraham woo, went on to sacrifice Isaac, but God told him to stay his hand. Moses led the children out of Egypt. And I come to bad record, Isaiah and Jacob, and Jacob being a trickster, was in the will of God. By faith, he wrestled with a man all night long. By faith, God told him, your name is changed to Israel, which means you are my people. Go ahead and lead them where I want them to go. I heard Isaiah. I heard Isaiah say, my mouth is not clean. My lips cuss folk out. But God said, when I lay my hand on you, when I touch your lips, say what I want you to say. The power of faith is going ahead when others don't believe, when others can't can't see and step out where I tell you to step. Go where I tell you to go. Say when I tell you to say it. Ain't the Lord all right? They said Jesus wasn't the Messiah. But I believe. And in believing, he touched my heart. Can I get a witness? I don't know about you. But I don't know when you were saved. I don't know when you were converted. But I know when he touched me, he turned me around. Placed my feet on solid ground. Can I get a witness? 
Oh, somebody has been in the deep. Somebody has been in trouble. But look at you now. God. The power of faith is believing that God will do what he says he'll do. When people uh, will tell you, you are not going to amount to anything, but hold on to your faith in God. Hold on, uh, even though you mess up sometimes. Uh, hold on uh, when everybody around you uh, won't try to help you. Uh, but what a friend uh, we have in Jesus. Uh, all my sins uh, and griefs to bear. Uh, what a privilege uh, it is to carry uh, everything uh, to God in prayer. Uh, how many uh, have come out of darkness uh, into the light? Uh, how many God uh, has turned your life around? Uh, how many has God uh, blessed in the way? Uh, how many have God uh, opened up doors for? Uh, how many have God uh, covered you from dangers, uh, seen and unseen? Uh, how many, how many, how many, how many can I get? somebody to praise him because of your faith. Let me tell you something. You can't buy his goodness. Y'all sit down. I don't care how cold, how mean you want to look at me. I'm going to look back at you. Why? Because I care for the soul. This is what God is aiming at. Pastor Rector, you just stepped all over my toes this morning. <laughs> well, honey, I missed the mark because I want to step on your heart. <laughs> Without the change of heart, there can be no change of mind. You ain't doing nothing but just drawing back and putting your foot in Epsom sauce and coming back out doing the same thing. But when I hit your heart, y'all know how it is. Them bunions start hurting. Mama Jizzy, you used to get hot water, Epsom salt, brown vinegar, put your foot in there. Hot as it can be. Should have seen Bunny moving her foot over here. You know <laughs> this is the God that we serve, y'all. This sermon is to enlighten. Because don't tell nobody you got faith in God and you never come home to visit daddy. Don't tell them you got faith in God. And you can't even give so that others might be helped. Not only does Pilgrim has to take care of this, but we take care of the family as well. And one of the things that God has blessed this church with is that we ain't had to have no bake sales, hot dog sales, plate sales. Everything we've done it's been through your giving. Tithes and all. So let me say this. If you ever make it to church, you better get your party on. Because you don't know when the next party for you is going to be. Well, wait a minute, preacher. Wait a minute. We're talking about church. This is still a party. This is God's party. Hello. If you can stand up and praise him for those, those songs out there, you ought to be able to come in here and praise him for his presence in here.
I'm, 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 I got a little Pentecostal in me, got a little holiness in me, but I grew up Stone Baptist, but I never liked a dry Baptist church. I, I never liked dry folks in the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not entertaining you. I'm telling you what thus say the Lord. This message, this message is for those who have been trying to do it your way. Let, let me say this again. When it's your thoughts, and your thoughts are not his thoughts, your ways is not his ways, something needs to change if what you're doing not working. If it's causing you more worry, then you need to give it to God and leave it there. And that's what I like about God. Pilgrim, I pray for the church all the time. And guess what? When I pray, lift up the church roll. I can back off and say, God, them your people. And guess what I'm going to do? <laughs> and guess what? God will take care of it. He'll do that. Who are you hooked up with? Stop being counterfeit. They got counterfeit money going around, and somebody took a 20. I said, man, what you doing with my money? He said, well, there have been some bad ones come through here. I said, hey. I said, okay, as long as that one ain't. But I, I want you to see how people, are you transparent enough? Nobody wants to go before a judge, lawyer. <laughs> Nobody wants to be under subpoena. But how many of you, if you were arrested, for being a Christian would be found guilty. When the evidence comes in, how many would be convicted by the evidence? Uh-oh, wait a minute. Faith without work. Say that. Did I say that? No. So you, you can't have a crime unless you do something, right? Okay, you can't be arrested unless you've done something, right? All right, so, so I'm, here's what I'm putting at. If you had to go up, somebody said, well, they are Christian. Now, you can't be like Peter said, no, I don't know him. <laughs> the evidence got you in court. So now, the prosecutor is working. Your defense attorney is sitting there saying, well, brother, I'm sorry, but they got this right. You're guilty on this. You're guilty on that. Uh, you better plead mercy on the court. No, but how many would be convicted of being a Christian because of your actions? That's all I'm going to say. This ain't, this ain't a shout message, but this right here, I want to get in your spirit because it's not always about you. Jesus was brought up on charges because of what he did for the people. Uh, who could bring charges up on what you did in goodness for the people? So just know we're approaching one of the greatest times in human history, and that's time of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We ought to come every Sunday expecting something, giving our praise, giving our attention, giving of our substance because he can wave his hand and everything that you say is yours is gone. Did somebody hit me the other week when I said everything that you have was his 
but he gave what was his to you that you can give some of what was his back to him. So our prosperity is in him giving. Even before you were thought of, he was giving. Even after you got here, he was giving. And when you got old enough and he started blessing you, he said, well, I'm going to bless them with what is mine. And I'm going to see if what is mine, they're going to give a portion of it back to me because it's already mine. Don't think you own anything. You were created after his likeness. And God created man for one thing. Take care of his creation and praise him. And guess what we don't want to do? Take care and praise. Take care and praise. Your house is his. Take care and praise. Yeah. Sometimes you ought to just shout around your house and thank God for yeah. Rest on your feet. Rest on your feet. Those who can, those who can't, just sit where you are. Unless you just want to stretch your back here. But I, I come before you to say, God has blessings with your name on it. But you need to learn how to let go and let God. Uh, it's so easy to do good. But don't you know you got to use gray matter to think about doing bad? You have to think about how you're going to treat somebody that mistreated you. You got to devise a plan of get you back. But when you give it to God, God is already your get you back person. Hallelujah. Now, if there's someone here today, you're not saved, you're not anchored in the Lord, I'm giving you an opportunity to come. Give God your heart. And let me shake your hand. I'm not asking you to join the church. I'm asking you to be saved. I'm asking you to be restored. I'm asking you to come back to the Lord. There's a lot of people that strayed away. COVID has done a lot of stuff. They got accustomed to staying home. They got accustomed to watching. And, and it's all right when you're away and you still want to see your service. I'm glad we're out there. We're not going anywhere. But I'm just saying... Come on and acknowledge God and let him know that you need him in your life. Can someone do that? You've been burdened. You've been stressed. You wonder why I just can't get it all together. There ain't nothing but Satan's attack. But God is a mind fixer and a heart regulator. So if there's one who needs to do that, you come. There's one who need to do that. You come. Now, if we have someone who would like to join the church, we extend our hand to you for that. You can come by way of letter, by way of baptism, or by way of Christian experience if need be. Will you come? If that's you, will you come? Hallelujah. You may be seated. Come on and give God some praise for a blessed house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, Sister Jim. That my little man back there. That's all right. He's a handful. Hey. How you doing? Come in. Come in. Come in and give Pastor a hug. You haven't seen me. Come on here.
He's been in the aisle and mama been trying to hold him. No, don't hold him in here. Unlike kids, let, 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 let them get used to having church. Amen. This is for church membership. The first one for this year. Tasha Leach. Tasha Leach. Certificate of membership. This certifies that Tasha Leach was baptized, completed new members class, and received the right hand of fellowship with the Pilgrim Baptist Church family at 1325 Barksdale Road, Newark, Delaware, on April the 2nd, 2023. And this was signed by June P. Austin, the church clerk, and the Reverend Dr. Lonnie E. Rector, pastor. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Austin. I give you my right hand, Sister Leach, welcoming you to Pilgrim Baptist Church once again. Not as one who was uniting, but one who has been united. Thank you for your study. And thank you for your consistency. Keep coming. Amen. Our prayers is going to be for you. So just stay right here for a minute. Amen. Back up right here between these gentlemen. Don't get too far back. I want you to stumble right there now. Our insurance ain't working like that. All right. All right. And we're going to give them the right hand of fellowship. We're going to give her the right hand of fellowship. Amen. And we're going to ask, start off with our deacon's wife. Amen. Now, uh, you're going to have to go to Mama Jensen right there in the chair right there and let her shake your hand. Go over there right quick. Let us shake your hand. Mama Jen says, Sister Leach, amen. Y'all stand up, Jake and wife, and come this way. Y'all come around this way. You're going to make a U-turn and come back around. No, you're going to make a U-turn and come. Come on, come on. You're coming, right? Come on down. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Everybody going to make you welcome. 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 Everybody going to make you welcome to the dying land. Everybody going to make you well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Everybody going to make you welcome to the I'm singing, oh, oh, bless you. oh, glory, oh, the preacher's going to make you well, oh, well, oh, well, oh, the preacher's going to make you well, to the dying lamb. I'm singing, oh, glory, oh, oh, glory to the dying lamb. Hallelujah. Come on and give God the hand of praise for Sister Leach. We have, uh, we have one more that uh, we will give later. Uh, but because she has yet to be baptized, oh, this stopped us from being over there. But we're going to get back over there and we'll get her baptized and uh, uh, give her the right hand of fellowship as well. Amen. Amen. Love you. As we pray for you, we ask that you pray for each of us. All the family says, hello. Uh, my brothers have called, and uh, they, they hit me on Passion Week, and, and uh, they are concerned, and they are asking how we were coming, and told them we were coming fine, and Dennis and Alan, and my sister Kathy out of Florida said, tell the people hello, and so I, I want to do that. Thank you for praying for my sister-in-law, my wife, Sister Barbara, uh, as she is still uh, rehabbing. Uh, uh, they are... Uh, 
trying to fit her now for a prosthesis and hopefully uh, she will stop being a little stubborn. Uh, y'all laughing, but y'all don't know Barbara Jean. Amen. Uh, I ask that you lift Barbara up. Amen. Uh, that she will go through the rehab and do it well so that uh, she'll be able to sustain herself down the road. Ain't God good? Amen. Let us rest on our feet. Yes. Oh. I know it was the blood. Amen. And then give him Do we have any who did not receive? Hallelujah. Dwight. Somebody get on that side. Somebody. Dwight, Dwight, Dwight. Somebody get on this side. Y'all keep your hands up. Go down the left aisle, do it. Let Deke pass it. You over here, McCormick. Get on the right side. Go down that side. Trey's already at it. Come on. There he is back there. Yeah. He's over there already. Stay on that side, Sister Brother Mac McNeil. Brother McCormick, go down the middle aisle. Receive the tray on the other side. Amen. Yeah, I'm having God to hurry up and get back over there. We don't forget how we do things. Hallelujah. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from Today, it will never lose its power. Let me say that again. Reaches to the high. Jesus took bread. He broke it. He blessed it and said, this bread represents my body that has been broken, bruised for you, for the remission of your sins. He says, take and eat. Likewise, he took the cup. And as he took the cup, he lifted it up and said, this cup represents my blood that is shed for you for the remission of your sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, ye do show the Lord's death 
until he comes again. Let us eat together. They will never lose this power. They will never lose. It will never lose. Oh, it will never. Let us stand as they did that evening. I know we have a basket and there's a, now don't leave that in here now. I just got through talking about cleaning up. Brother Jerry, when we sang that song, I got to clean up what I missed up. So we ask that you take your cup and uh, place it in the trash can outside if nobody takes it in here. We're asking that you place it in the trash can as you go out, and let us be, let us be, uh, cleansely, cleansingly, amen, uh, appropriate in the sight of God. Uh, our Christian ed, all our information for our Christian ed is out. Am I correct? Everybody got it? All right, now, Sunday school books. Uh, are out there now. If you didn't order Sunday school book in 2021, 20, 22, uh, your name may not be out there. Uh, but if you want a Sunday school book, we ask that you sign up. Uh, we will be coming out of the national lesson on this Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock by way of Zoom. You can get that information off of our uh, website. Uh, the number for uh, Zoom, the Zoom meeting number and ID number is on there, and then you will be able to find what lesson uh, we are teaching coming forth. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, we actually. Yep, I'm getting there. All right, and this is Palm Sunday, so everyone will receive a palm as you prepare to exit today. Amen. Let us remember what the Lord has done for each of us. Don't take life for granted. Don't take your prosperity for granted. Just because things are good now, look how quickly things can turn. And so there was one death there in Sussex County, and uh, we ask that you pray for that area, Kent County, Sussex County, and uh, it, it, it came through Delaware, came through Rising Sun, went down to Newcastle, went on back up to New Jersey. Amen. And we are still standing. Hallelujah. So his goodness has protected us once again from the elements. And I am so grateful for that. Amen. Now, uh, uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I understand the power of faith. Look at the one next to you on the other side. Say, neighbor, I understand the power of faith. Now, I want you to go in peace. I'm not giving you the benediction because Jesus did it. What he started, let us complete. As we leave here, let us walk in the newness of life.